Let me tell you something. You don't ever want to judge a book by its cover. So this week we're doing a video on don't judge people. Okay. So I say people who judge don't matter. People who matter don't judge. There you go. Maybe that's a good saying. Mm -hmm. Do you think um, people judge us? Probably. I think everybody at some level judges other people but need to be have an open mind I think. Mm -hmm. Especially if you don't know right? those people. Right, I think you always have to know the story behind the person of what their past is. Um, don't judge them by appearances. Looks can be deceiving, right? That's right. Look how bad I look. <laughs> but I'm really good. <laughs> don't be fooled. I'm glad you didn't judge me 25 years ago. Maybe you did. I don't know. You still chose me. I know. You're fun. Thanks. Yeah, you had a good heart. Thanks. Yeah. I love you. Love you. That's, that's a good one. Huh. I don't judge you. Thanks for not judging me. No judgy. No judgy. We're still waiting for this to numb up. Yep. I didn't feel anything. Yeah? It's starting to numb. I am going to start talking to you. Funny. probably will. Is this real life? Yeah. <laughs> we were talking about how you were judged um, at a, purchasing a car. So what happened? I mean, I had just wrecked my car. Yeah. So I needed a new car. Every salesman walked right past me because they looked at me being young. Because you look young, yeah. And they thought, you can't afford anything. Right. So none of them helped me until a guy that I knew from school walked up to me and said, hey, have you been helped? Yeah. So, and did you buy a car that day? Did not buy that day, but okay. I did buy later. Did you buy from him? Bought from him, did not buy from anyone else. See? Because of loyalty. Yep. Yeah, he gave you a chance and didn't judge you like all the other people did. So you went back and you purchased. Yep. So, first of all, the one, the only, I was talking about you in front of a bunch of realtors today, Tux Browning, Jeff Browning, but also all you have to do is Google Infinity and that's what pops up, Tux, because he delivers his car. In black tie. Pretty cool, huh? So I wanted to talk to you today because I know you're just like fantastic at car sales. And I find like you and I are so similar in our the way that we um, engage with our clients. they are become friends for life. 100%. Million percent. And I think that in real estate and also in any any sales, really, and in, in all facets of life, I'm um, talking about like, judging a book by its cover. Probably and, one of the most dangerous things you could ever do. You know, Todd and I will say, you know, you don't ever want to be doing an open house and when someone pulls up in a clunker because maybe they were at Callaway Gardens and they were gardening for the afternoon, they're not gonna pull out their Mercedes. Um, don't assume and judge someone based on the outside appearance. Well, you know, the, the old saying, uh, you know, assume is to yeah. make an ass out of you and me. And right. Really, when you look at a person, you know, and we're all guilty of it, we make snap judgments based on the way they're dressed or the way they carry themselves. But in sales, it's probably the most dangerous thing you can do mm -hmm. because with that judgment becomes a preconceived idea which can affect your demeanor and your attitude all the way down. And your attitude is really the key in sales because what you give off is what you're going to pick back up. Right. You know, it's really just a mirror image. you I'm just checking things out are you looking for something in particular no well yeah uh, something conservative yes you got my nice stuff thank you how much is this I don't think this would fit you well I didn't ask if it would fit I asked how much it was how much is this Marie 
It's very expensive. It's very expensive. Look, I got money to spend in here. I don't think we have anything for you. You're obviously in the wrong place. Please leave. I found that no matter somebody's creed, color, origin, dress code, or anything else like that, people aren't usually reaching out to salespeople or putting themselves in a sales environment unless they're interested in buying whatever product you have to offer. And then you've decided immediately when you have that person that is there from everything that you've done, you've made a snap judgment that, oh, they're not gonna buy, so I'm not gonna try. I'm sorry. I was in here yesterday. You wouldn't wait on me? Oh. You work on commission, right? Uh, yes. Big mistake. Big. Huge. I have to go shopping now. So have you had that example? Like, have you ever seen another salesperson in your office not go out to the car lot because they saw a person pull up in a beater and they thought, yeah, you can have a tux? Uh, I mean, too many times to count. You know, I mean, at least from my philosophy, the older a car is, the more likely you are to need a new one. So, <laughs> you know, I, right? I'm more likely to run out to the 1985 <laughs> Grand Wagoner <laughs> than I... <laughs> the three R philosophy, rapport, relationship, referral. Build a rapport, maintain a relationship, ask for the referral. See, you just today. The first job of any salesperson is to establish rapport. Mm -hmm. Because let's just face it, if you're in sales and the person that's buying something doesn't like you, it doesn't matter the value you've built, it doesn't matter what you can provide, they are not going to do business with you. Now it's funny, you and I are also judged. 100%. Realtors and car salesmen. So when you tell people you're a car salesman, what do, they, what do you think they're saying about you? Instantly nothing good. And that's one of the other things that we talk about prejudgment. Mm -hmm. You know, the people that come into us are as guilty of that as we are to them but they are allowed to judge because at the end of the day, they are the ones making the decision. Right. They are the judge. Right. So for me to judge them back puts us on equal footing and yeah, we're and not. But th I think the step to look inside and find out why you're being judgmental is usually a self-contained issue. You know, I judge everybody on their individual actions with me yeah. and that's it. And that's the only thing that goes into my judgment of someone. Mm -hmm. Your job in sales is to create rapport with that person. Mm -hmm. And if you don't understand them, don't understand where they're coming from, understand what's important to them, right. you can't deliver the value that's important to them because everybody's definition of value is drastically different. Right. So your job really in sales at the end of the day is to establish value, but you can't do that if you've judged somebody because you don't know what their value is. Right. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming here. You know, I love you. I love you too. Yay. Always here. Love you, Taxi. I'm always here, guys. The baby Tux. Little one coming September 20th. Woo -woo. I thought of you because I feel like having a child on the autism spectrum, have you ever been in a situation where someone looks at you like control your child? What is wrong with you as a parent? And it's, you know, and how that makes you feel because people are just so naive to the oh, fact yeah. that they don't, they don't understand. And it's so annoying. Several times, you know, you're going to have those times, um, where you just have to grow crocodile skin because you bring this child into the world. And maybe it's because, of course, any mother beyond loves their child and they're the most precious gift you could ever, ever be grateful for. And you're just so grateful that you have them. With uh, a child with autism, they don't look the naked eye from someone else's point of view. You can't see that. It's invisible. So right. when they look at that child, they just see a, a typical child right. that's being naughty. Why is this 
parent allowing this child to behave this way, I would never let that happen. What they quickly assume is that the child is just like their children or someone else that they know. How do you, how do you how do you address that with the public when someone says or gives you a glare? Well, the first time it happened was when he was real little, and we were um, as a family. He had off school on Martin Luther King Day, and we went out to a nice restaurant for lunch, and we were shopping in a cute little district. And he was actually really good. My daughter was a baby, and she's the one who was crying. So my husband picked her up and was walking her around the restaurant, and. Um, calming her down and I was sitting there and we were wrapping up lunch and I asked the waitress for the check and this woman looked at me in her suit with her girlfriend in a suit and said are you, are you finished and I kind of took me back and I said I'm sorry I said are you <laughs> kind of an odd question do you need a chair or something and she said no I just want to let you know how rude your son is being and how rude you, you are letting him be that way and I was back and I looked at her and I said, excuse me? And her son, her friend was kind of shrieking, you know, kind of dipping down like, oh no. I reached into my wallet and I gave her a card that explained what autism was and I nicely put it on mm -hmm. her table and I said, this is what the face of autism is. And I was a little ticked and I said, mm -hmm. educate yourself. He picked up the yeah. card, he crumpled it up in her hand and threw it at me. I reached down, I opened it back up, I spread it out put it back on her table and she did it again and threw it at me. And I said to her, do you go to church? And she said, it's none of your damn business. And I said, probably he isn't. But I want to let you know if you do go, church doesn't end when you close those doors behind you. Hmm. And I said, have a good day. And that was my first time that I ever dealt with that. The second and third and fourth were, you know, usually in Walmart or in the grocery store when Devin would just flop on the floor and scream and kick and, you know, just spin in circles and it would last 20 minutes. Yeah. And there was nothing I could do. I grew more comfortable with Devin and trying to comfort him and stop worrying about how others or that I needed to prove to others that my son and I are okay, that, you know, we're, as soon as I got over myself, I was able to kindly, when people would walk by and stare and say, we're okay. So then I would let them off the hook and they could walk away. Every moment's a teachable moment. They get it. Yeah. If you're not harsh and mean. But you're still going to get those people. There's nothing you can do about it. Well, I love you. And I think you're, I you I think you're the best mom and the best sister. Oh, I love you and I think you're the best mm -hmm. aunt. And you're the best Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>